today's project is dun, 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 strawberry jam. I'm so excited about this. About, oh, I don't know how many months ago. It was back in April. I went strawberry picking and I picked up like 25 pounds of strawberries at this farm. And at that time, I just didn't have time to do anything with it. So we got them all washed and the tops cut off and we threw them in the freezer and they've been sitting there ever since. And I decided today is the day that we're gonna start processing these strawberries. I've got all kinds of plans for them. I'm going to start with, like I said, the strawberry jelly or jam. I also want to make uh, strawberry cheesecakes in a jar. And then depending on what I have left, I may make some um, strawberry pie filling or something. So we'll see, we're gonna play that part by ear because I don't know how much is going to be taken up because I've never done this before. Kind of excited. Like, yeah, it's a first time thing for me to make um, these two different things. So let's get going. I'm going to start off by washing my jars. Got a new pack of ball mason jars. These are the half pint size. So I'm going to wash them up real good and then I'm going to pop them in the oven so that they stay hot while I get the jam ready. And um, yeah, that's important because this is gonna be a hot processing, a hot process thing. <laughs> so the jam's gonna be hot, so my jars have to be hot, and then I need to put them into hot water for the canning process. So anyway, stay tuned. I'm gonna get this stuff washed up and I'll be back. I just wanted to take a quick second to thank all of you for joining me as I learn how to make and preserve strawberry jam. I'm going to be sharing with you not just my processes, but also my mistakes along the way. So hopefully you guys can learn from me and not make the same mistakes that I made. Next up, you're going to take your clean jars and place them on a baking tray, then pop them in your oven and set your oven temperature to 200 degrees to let them warm up nice and slow so that they are not damaged. So the next couple of things that I'm going to do to get all of my prep work done is get my canner ready. Now, uh, strawberries do not need to be pressure canned. They just need to be either water bath canned or steam canned. I do not have a steam canner, but I can use my pressure canner as either a steam canner or a water bath canner. Um, and I'm actually going to try it for the first time today as a steam canner. I'm really excited to try that because it is so much faster than water bath canning. And the reason for that is that you only need a couple, three, four inches of water at the bottom instead of filling up your entire pot with water and waiting for it to boil. So obviously this much water will boil a lot faster than this much water. Um, and then the steam inside the pot is what um, does its thing and heats everything up to the right temperature and gets it so that you can can your, your stuff. So um, I'm going to be trying that for the first time today. I got directions from some family members who've done this and have given me some great tips on how to get it done. Basically, once my water is boiling, I'm going to follow the directions for a steam canner and not put my regulator on the, uh, on the lid because obviously we're not pressure canning. So I'm going to go ahead and get my water in here and get this heated up and then we're going to start making some jam. I added about three or four quarts of water to my pot and then went ahead and put the rack in the bottom. Now this is a super easy pectin free recipe that only takes three ingredients. And that is obviously your strawberries. It's, you're gonna need four pounds of strawberries. You're going to need fresh lemon juice enough uh, lemons to do a half a cup of lemon juice and then you're gonna need some sugar four cups of sugar I haven't measured it out yet four pounds of strawberries four cups of sugar and then half a cup of fresh lemon juice now the reason why this is a pectin free I love doing pectin free jelly recipes and jam recipes fruits have their own natural pectin in them um, some fruits have more than others I did a raspberry jam 
uh, already previously, and I'll link that video here. I didn't need any lemon juice at all in that one because raspberries are very high in pectin. Uh, strawberries, on the other hand, are not. They have pectin, but it is a, it is a lower amount. So if you just cook the strawberries uh, by themselves, they're not gonna thicken up like my raspberries did. But citrus is very high in pectin. So by adding a little bit of citrus, it um, helps bring out the pectin that's in the strawberries, obviously, and it also helps maintain the color. And no, you do not taste it because it's not enough to change the flavor at all. But it's super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and start processing these strawberries. I'm going to just drop them in my food processor and pulse it a couple times. I don't want it pureed, I just want it chunky. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll throw everything in a pot. And now that you have all of the ingredients in the pot, you want to make sure that you stir it all up and get everything incorporated. Then go ahead and set your stove to about a medium low heat. Um, you wanna warm this up nice and slow until the sugar is completely dissolved. As you can see here, uh, basically the liquid's gonna look more transparent, not grainy. And then you'll know that it's time to move on to the next step. And that is to crank up the heat and bring this to a hard rolling boil. Once you're boiling, you want to go ahead and set a timer for about two minutes and keep it boiling and stirring it constantly so that it does not burn to the bottom of your pot. Once your two minutes are up, you'll want to turn your heat back down to low so that your uh, jam it comes to a nice low simmer and keep it there for about 25 to 30 minutes It really depends on your desired consistency, but keep in mind that it will continue to thicken as it cools Okay, so I have to interject for a quick second here in my own video because I screwed up and I wanted to make sure I pointed out to you. In the voiceover where I said you let it boil on high uh, for two minutes, that is correct. I realized that I messed up before I did the voiceover, so I wanted to make sure that I had the correct information in the voiceover. But the video actually does not show me turning the heat down after those two minutes. I somehow missed that part in the instructions completely when I was filming the video, um, but I wanted to make sure that you guys had the right info. It did not screw me up at all. It just made the uh, jam ready a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and share my, my flub with you. <laughs> so just to reiterate, you let it boil on high for two minutes, and then you go ahead and bring the heat down to a nice, easy simmer. Um, and you don't have to stir it as frequently. You won't have to worry about it as much burning. Definitely keep an eye on it. And then let it go for about 30 minutes or so or until it reaches the consistency that you like. Now that I got that flub out of the way, stay tuned because there's one more coming at you later on in this video. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started in filling up some of these jars. 
As you can see, the strawberry jam has thickened up really nicely. It's looking good, it's smelling good. So it's time to turn the stove off and pull our hot jars out of the oven and fill them up. space measuring tool this thing it comes in really handy for you newbies um, like myself you can see I can actually put a tiny bit more in these so now I'm gonna take my little magnet tool and I've got in this pot over here my lids in the hot water got to do. You know what? This is good though. This is good. You guys are learning with me. All for the YouTube. I'll take these back off. You know what I didn't do? Something very important. Put them back in the water. I forgot to clean my rims and that is so important because if you have any kind of debris on your rims it will stop uh, the lids from sealing properly on the jars. So let me go get that taken care of. Okay, so I just have a clean paper towel. You can do this with um, some vinegar or just plain water. You just need to make sure that your rims are completely debris free. And as you can see, because I messed up, they're not. I'm so glad I remembered that. And I don't mind showing you my little flub because it's how we learn. Now the hard part about this is I can't grab, you know what, let me do this. Because these jars are so stupid hot. There we go. Now I can hold the jar and do a good job. This one's got some really stuck on there, so I'm going to have to do that really good. Okay, now I feel confident about putting these lids on. I have made sure my lids are clean, my rims are clean. I have made sure I popped all my bubbles. Now it's time to put these on for real. Lids on, now we just need our rings. When placing your rings, make sure to only finger tighten them on your jar. If you put them on too tight, then during the canning process it will not allow any of the air to escape the jar and that is needed for you to have a proper seal. So I ended up with eight half pint jars that I am now placing in the steam canner. And just to clarify, I am using my pressure canner as a steam canner for this process. Once that's done, we place the lid on the pot, crank up the heat, and wait for it to start boiling. So I just set the timer for the strawberries to process in the steam canner for 10 minutes. Um, and while I wait, I'm gonna clean up all the mess on my stove and the walls, cause I've got some steam in my face. Let me move over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta clean up all the strawberry stuff that exploded everywhere with this thing boiling um, as hard as I had to have it going. And I'm gonna start prepping for my next project, which I'm excited about. Something, a little plus that I got out of doing this was um, when I froze the strawberries and then thawed them out, I ended up with a ton of strawberry juice, okay? I'm not letting this go to waste. I decided I'm going to make some strawberry syrup. So stay tuned for that. Um, I gotta find me a good recipe. Actually, I think I, I saw one last night that I'm gonna pull up and try. So I've got lots of this, because I've got three more bags in the freezer, and this is only the juice out of one bag. We got another one on the counter. So we're gonna have lots of strawberry syrup to use like toppings for ice cream and pancakes and ooh, lots of good stuff. Can you tell I like strawberries? 
like a lot. I love strawberries. So anyway, this will be done in a few minutes. Stay tuned. All right, timer's about to go off. There it is. 10 minutes is up. I'm gonna turn the stove off. I'm feeling like I'm looking the wrong way at this camera. We should look over there. Anyway, turn the stove off. <laughs> Can you tell I'm new to YouTube? So now, because I have an electric stove, I'm going to carefully slide the canner off of the hot burner. So that it stops boiling. And I'm going to let it sit there for about five minutes before I open it up. Okay, so five minutes are up. It's time to open this baby up. Very carefully. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, I don't have a lot of room in my kitchen. So I'm going to set these on my dining room table. I've laid out several layers of towels to protect the table and they are going to sit there for a full 24 hours undisturbed to make sure that they seal properly. I'm so excited. Look at that beautiful color. Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Do you hear that? That little ping means it's sealed. So here we are 24 hours later and it's time to check our jars, make sure everything's okay. So the first thing you're going to do is check that there was a proper seal in the jar. And the way we're gonna do that is to just tap the top. If it doesn't pop back, there's a little button up here, um, then you're good to go. I'll show you the difference because I happen to have one jar that did not seal and you'll be able to hear it. See how it goes in and makes that little popping sound? This is actually the very first jar I've had in my little six batches that I've done that has not sealed. And I'm pretty sure it's because it had to do with that little screw up I did earlier um, where I didn't wipe the rims down properly before I put the lid on. So not bad though, one out of eight jars didn't seal. And all that means is this one's going straight in the refrigerator so that we can eat it right away. I'm not gonna put it on the shelf and I can't wait to taste this. So that's the first thing you wanna do is make sure that all of your jars are sealed. Then another test you can do real quick is if you unscrew the lid, you should be able to hold the jar by that lid. And then you know, you know that you've got a really good seal going on. After you've checked your seals, you wanna take all your jars to the sink and just give them a quick rinse with some uh, warm soapy water because uh, sometimes you'll get siphoning in your canner pot and that'll leave the outside of your jars either sticky or greasy depending on what you're canning. Um, I also have hard water so I tend to get this little like film residue on the outside. And so just by washing them, it makes them nice and clean and they look a lot prettier when you put them on the shelf. The last thing you're gonna do before you put them on the shelf is make sure that you label what's in the jar and the date that you canned it. Now you can put your jar of jam or whatever it is that you just made on your shelf, in your pantry, wherever you store your food in your cabinet and it'll be there for you for up to a year. You can enjoy this anytime you want. It's quick and easy. So that is pretty much it on making strawberry jam. Now I do want to give you guys a little bit of a reminder. Please remember that I am brand new at this, okay? I am not an expert canner at all. I'm learning the ropes. I've done my research but I encourage you to do your research as well to make sure that you are practicing safe canning techniques. I am trying my best to do that. Not perfect yet, not, you know, not gonna pretend to be. So um, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And um, yeah, looking forward to making the next batch with these strawberries and see what we're gonna do there. If you are enjoying what you're watching on my channel, please do me a favor and like this video, 
hit the subscribe button and also make sure that you hit the bell so that you'll be notified every time I have new content. I would greatly appreciate the support and it will help my channel along. If you'd like a printed copy of this delicious recipe, make sure you check out the link in the description of this video. And don't forget to learn something new and grow a little too.